We move to Iran now and the almost inevitable next round of sanctions on the Islamic Republic became a reality despite the efforts of Turkey and Brazil to dissuade the rest of the UN Security Council. In a range of moves aimed at curbing Iran's nuclear program, the resolution will more than double the number of Iranian companies whose assets are frozen. UN member states must exercise vigilance with the Central Bank of Iran and other Iranian banks. But after pressure from Russia and China, Iran's oil and gas industries will not not be targeted. The thing with these sanctions is that it's always claimed they don't target the Iranian people. They instead go after specific businesses and individuals with direct links to the government. But there is an argument which says Iranian business by association gets hit too. That's what I learned from Babak Imamiyam, who I spoke to earlier in the week. He is chairman of the British Iranian Business Association in London. Well, the effects are I have to say the effects have been there for a long time and this negative sentimental effects uh, are, for, I'll give you an example, Let, let's take our association, there are 2,500 professionals, expatriate Iranians who are very successful around the world. Just because of the sentiment about sanctions and dealing with Iran would cause problem, neither, none of us are interested to deal with Iran. So Iran is losing friends like us, expatriate community, losing everyone else. Uh, but there are also other costs, like uh, the financial cost of transactions, which is costing the Iran 35 billion pound uh, dollar a year. Mm. There is also Iran needs access to foreign funds for its investment. It can't sell its government bonds at even yield of 8%, where Greece, which is a bankrupt, uh, mm. can sell its bonds at 6%. Right, so, so this, there is, are this is an interesting major point. Major Sorry, yeah, I'll jump in there because, you know, we focus a lot and certainly uh, some of the U UN Security Council members focus a lot on the fact that these are very targeted sanctions. They go after specific banks or specific businesses. But the knock-on effect, it's like a stigma, I guess, the stigma of doing business with anything to do with Iran. Uh, yes, it, it is, exactly. So the, the stigma, the sentiment, uh, it's been a major effect there. So the question about today, what happened today, was not that it's going to have even further effect on what is happening with Iran. It's that now these sanctions which previously were unofficial now they have become official what, what does that mean is if say for example tomorrow there were a fantastic relationship between tehran and washington and they exchanged ambassadors mm. these unofficial sanctions could have been removed immediately but now they've become low as case of libya it would take many years to uh, undo all these uh, legislations so does all of this push iran into the arms of, of I use Security Council members, for example, China and, and Russia. Well, I like to say it's like the first wave of attack. Uh, say Iran has been attacked on the first wave. Now, what is its reaction going to be? Because I, I can tell you, if they do retaliate uh, on its first attack, the second wave of attack would be even more difficult. So the next round of sanction would be even more uh, massive. So they really have to think. So I think they have cornered itself. Iran has cornered itself in a very bad position, I think. Babak Imamiyam joining us there live from London. Thank you for your thoughts and for your time.